as you may be able to tell from the fact we have recorded music, Andrew sadly cannot be with us this morning, so we have the choir lurking in our midst in a very positive way, and we will be using um, recorded music for our service. Today is the um, accession of the Queen to the throne. This is officially the 70th anniversary of her reign. Um, and so at the end of the service, we'll be having a uh, additional prayer. We'll be singing the national anthem in honor of her. Um, but obviously the main celebrations will be coming in June. So it'll be slightly different to then. The, the hymns are um, some of the ones which she has uh, kind of identified as being her personal favorites. So there's a thematic link with those as well. But we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather, let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to sing our first hymn for this morning, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. and sisters, as we come together to celebrate the presence of Christ here amongst us in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. 
we are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. So we're going to sing together the Kyrie. all who through your repent have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to sing together the words of glory and I don't know if I've attached the music which is really close so we'll say the glory instead. Glory be to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, God, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers that by reason of the frailty of our nature we cannot always stand upright. Grant to us such strength and protection as many may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and raised with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. So let's sit for our reading. The Old Testament reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. Two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live amongst a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. <clears throat> then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, Until cities lay waste without inhabitant, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate, until the Lord sends everyone far away, 
and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remains in it, it shall be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. A holy seed is its stump. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we'll have our New Testament reading. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn receive, in which you also stand. The New Testament reading so, is taken. Ah, that's okay, I'm sorry. Rob was going to read it for us. I'm not going to read it. That's why it didn't work. The New Testament reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the Apostles. Last of all, As to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. So as you are able, would you please stand as we sing our gospel hymn, Be Thou My Vision.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there or on the shore of the lake. Fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out to um, I uh, put out to a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowd from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets had, were beginning to break. So they signaled to their partners, to the other boats, to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they, are brought, when they have brought their boats ashore, they left everything and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak, and may you heard the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, today is the 70th accession of Her Majesty the Queen to the throne. And now, obviously, I think most of us here probably don't remember that particular day. Um, but luckily, through the power of television and the internet, we get to see all these things. And so I saw the crown, so therefore I know. I, I, yeah, I saw the crown, and so I will take some of the information from it. But actually, the Queen was with her husband. She was in Africa when she was informed that her father had died. But not just that her father died, but also that she was now the queen. And yeah, this is a huge change in who you are as a person. When we lose a parent, yes, that is really hard, actually trying to process the loss of someone who has been literally with you your entire life is really challenging. To then be told that you are to take on that person's role as, as the, uh, the head of the church, the head of state, and all that that encompasses is really difficult. But the Queen, actually, she has gone through, and actually she's talked about this many times, about how her faith has kind of focused her, how it has given her the path to follow, how it has given her a rule of life. And actually, as we see here in our, our Gospel passage, we have um, Simon, sorry, uh, Simon who's become Peter, we have James and John, and obviously Andrew's in there as well, and they were taken out by Jesus. And when they saw what he did with them and saw them and heard him speak, they left everything and followed him. And again, if you look at what the Queen did, she had to leave her old life behind. She had to leave being the wife of a naval officer to take up the role as Queen. And they didn't look back. The Queen doesn't look back. Peter and James and John and Andrew, all the disciples don't look back. They look forward and they look ahead to what is to come. It is that steadfastness of faith and that dedication to service which is so powerful and so telling. I think today is probably a unique event. The likelihood of any monarch seeing 70 years on the throne is certainly not going to happen in our lifetime. It probably will never happen again. It is a unique and one, <coughs> as you, you know, it's a properly historic moment. But actually, it is a life of service and of dedication. For Simon and Andrew and James and John, they dedicated themselves to Christ and they followed him all the way through to all of them a fairly sticky end. For the Queen, she has followed her duty as monarch. She has followed her faith in God to do the right thing. And that's so powerful. And it speaks volumes about what we should be doing as well. Because we have these role models, we have these people who we can look to for to kind of get the sense of how we should be living. 
And actually the Gospel is brilliant for that because actually we can look at the Gospel, we can see exactly what Jesus teaches us and actually how people react and how they then go on. In fact, if we look at what Paul was saying, he says, you know, I was born too late to meet Jesus, but I've met him nonetheless. And that he had his calling, that he was sent on to proclaim the good news, to share the message of Christ. We have all been called. We're all called here together. We're called to follow God. We don't need to look backwards, but we need to look forwards. We need to be selfless in dedicating ourselves both to God and to actually showing his care to others. The only way we can do that is by being selfless. Peter and Andrew and James and John could have said, you know what, actually, look, I'm, I'm really busy. I've got my job here. I've got this going on. I can't, I can't, maybe later on, I can't do it now. The Queen could have said, this is really not for me. I can't do it. Paul could have said, out on the road to the Damascus, you know what, I can't do it, it's too much. But they didn't. They stepped forward and they did what they were called to do, what they were put on earth to do. For good and for ill, they went ahead. If we look to Peter especially, he ends up being crucified in Rome for his faith. If you look at the Queen, she's been through some really quite horrific times in full glare of public and media view but they remain steadfast in their faith. They've done all that is required of them and all that they've been asked to do. It is a role model which we can emulate as best we can. Obviously, we are not apostles, we are not royalty, but dedication to service, focusing on doing the right thing for others, focusing on our relationship with God. These are things which we can emulate with them. We can step forward and we can do the right thing. It is a challenge. It is tough, and it will sometimes cause us hurt. But also, dedicating ourselves to God is the right thing to do. Showing care for others is the right thing to do. Showing love to others is the right thing to do. Focus on your relationship with God. Focus on what it means to be his disciple, to follow him. Listen to where he is calling you to be. Be firm, step forward, and follow the path. Rejoice and give thanks to God. as you're able to please stand as we profess our faith and the faith of the whole church in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, a Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. From the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Dear Lord, we 
pray today for our Queen, Elizabeth, on the 70th anniversary of her accession to the throne. She has served her country, the Commonwealth, and you faithfully all in all those long years. We pray for her continued health and that our country may live in peace under her. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for peace in Eastern Europe, that the posturings of political leaders is tempered with compassion for the rights of their neighbours. We pray for all the world's leaders, grant them common sense, love of their fellow men, and the ability to make the right decisions for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are sick in mind, body or spirit. Bring them healing and peace. We pray for those suffering with long COVID, that their bodies may finally recover from this virus. We pray for the recovery of all those suffering from the virus, either in hospital or out. We mention by name those who have asked for our prayers. Brian Willison, Pamela Willison, Dorothy Duffy and Sally Ann. As daily life seems to be becoming more open and relaxed, may we remember that there are still vulnerable people who would be seriously ill if they contracted the virus. Keep them safe, Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for those who have recently died, including little Rayanne, who died alone despite the desperate attempts to rescue him. Comfort the bereaved. We pray for ourselves, Lord, who now have to live without our friends, Matthew, Valerie and Margaret. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And this is an excerpt from a prayer found on christiangoth.com. I pray that every ear that hears this knows there is no problem, no circumstance or situation greater than God. Every battle is in his hands for him to fight. I pray that these words be received into the hearts of every ear that hears them and every mouth that confesses them willingly. Thank you, Lord, that you are not leaving us on our own. You are always with us, even to the end of the world. Thank you that someday you will come again for us. I love you, Lord. This is my prayer. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. So to Abel, would you please stand and form a piece? May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, that you may be kept safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another just in sign of peace. Peace be with you. So we're going to sing our um, offertory hymn, Lord for the Years.
present. Be present, Lord Jesus, our risen high priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. From sunrise to sunset this day is holy, for Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with light that will not fade. This day the risen Lord walks with all your gathered people, unfold for us your word, and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. And though the night will overtake this day, you summon us to live in endless light, the never-ceasing Sabbath of the Lord. And so the choirs of angels and all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim his glory and join the unending song of praise, singing. and bless you loving father through jesus christ our lord and as we obey his command send your holy spirit that broken bread and wine up for may be for us the body and blood of your dear son who on the night before he died had supper with his friends and taking bread he praised you he broke the bread gave it to them and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bring before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Our Lady, St Thomas and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen we break this bread to share in the body of christ though we are many we are one body because we all share in one bread 
So we say, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to suffer. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
sing our post-communion hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. I'm so sorry, I've missed out several pieces of music, so we won't be going to sing that one because we haven't got the music. Um, so we'll skip over that very briefly and we shall pray instead, but I do apologise. So let us pray. Go before us, God, in all we do, with your most gracious favour, and guide us your, with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued and ending in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally by your everlasting mercy receive everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we say together, you have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, and blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal trinity, one God for ever and ever. Amen. So services this week, um, we'll have morning evening prayer Monday and Wednesday through Friday as per usual on Facebook and YouTube. Wednesday we'll be here for our midweek communion at 11 o'clock. Uh, next Sunday we'll have 8 BCP Holy Communion, then 9.30 here for the Eucharist and of course St Thomas's as well. Um, living in Love and Faith starts this week. So Living in Love and Faith, which I've mentioned for the past couple of weeks, is looking at um, a great deal of questions around how the church views and teaches things like marriage, divorce and remarriage, being single and looking at gender identity and sexuality and a few other bits and pieces as well. This is quite a large body of the work that the church has been working on over the past three years and it's been encouraged that all um, churches take the chance to reflect, to pray and to think about what it means and actually where God's calling the church to be in view of all these different issues. Um, so this is starting on Wednesday and it will run for five weeks, except for Ash Wednesday when we go take a break, so it's like the fourth week of, the, um, of it. Um, so it'll be either here at 12 o'clock in the, in the hall, or if you prefer the evening at half past seven down at St. Thomas's. Um, if you are interested and have not yet signed up, please do let me know, or come on the day, that'd be brilliant. Um, obviously, it would be good to make sure we've got enough books for everybody so everyone has um, things to work from. Um, having read the book, which is about that thing, it's quite a chunky document, it is really fascinating. And actually, there's some things which really do make you think and really start kind of questioning. Actually, for certain people, you may never have thought of it. For other people, it's actually the forefront of their mind all the time. And actually, the church has had a history of not always getting things right in terms of how we deal with divorcees, those who are gay, lesbian, bi, trans, and all the rest of it. And so it's worth, if you can make it to, to it, do come and join in. Do think about what it means and actually where, what God's trying to tell us, his church, in how we should treat people who kind of are, yeah, have got these things in their past, in their present, or in their future. Um, so yeah, so they are there, and it's, been, it's a five-week course, um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a fascinating thing, and I would heartily, heartily commend it to you all, if you can make it. Um, any other notices? Elaine, anything? Helen, anything? David, come on now. <laughs> uh, Darcy saves up the most obscure Old Testament readings for me. I'm sure I must have done something to um, upset him. I, I claim no. This is pure as a lecture. It has nothing to do with me, and I don't do the rosa, so I'm innocent, honest. Now, I know what an oak is um, in the Isaiah reading, whose stump remains standing when it's felled. But I didn't know what a terebinth was, and apparently, um, I'm sure you all know. But I looked it up, and it's a sort of very resinous sort of pine tree, also called the turpentine. So what's a boy of four to do? <laughs> so I went to the shops with my mum. A loaf of hovis, 43 farmers. <laughs> and there they told us, the king is dead. Um, I'm sure there's not enough of you here today, any of you who remember what they were doing. They wouldn't even be here or thought of 70 years ago today. But I thought you'd like to know that. I thought you'd find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, David. David, can I also thank, thank you for not trying to ask me what that tree was? I wouldn't have a clue, so thank you very much for that. That was I found very interesting, so I, I think it was a good thing. Well done. Any other notes? Is anything else anybody wishes to share? Sold through. Coffee after we do, we'll have coffee and refreshments in the hall, so if you wish to come and partake, please do so. Um, so I'd like you all to stand. We're going to pray for the Queen on her accession to the throne, and then we're going to remain standing for the Lord's Prayer and, sorry, the National Anthem, and then the dismissal afterwards. So let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee to keep thy church and household continually in thy true religion that they who do lean upon only upon the hope of thy heavenly grace may evermore be defended by thy mighty power, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so please join with me in singing the National Anthem. passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.